Hi, welcome to this course. In this course, I'll be showing you how to work with Videoscribe. Videoscribe is a software for creating whiteboard animations automatically. It is easy, it is quick, and it is inexpensive. With Videoscribe, you can create animated videos that are really amazing. And guess what? You do not need any editing skills to create such videos. But before we start, you need to download the Videoscribe package on your computer. So go to videoscribe.co to get started. Hello everyone. Um, welcome to our first episode of this Videoscribe tutorials. In this lesson, we're going to work around how Videoscribe works, the controls, the toolbox, and how you can create a basic animation using Videoscribe. So Videoscribe is an animation-based tool. It's used to create powerful animations, animations you can use to tell a story. Anything you want to do can be achieved in Videoscribe. So when you open Videoscribe for the very first time, you are presented with this screen. It has all the projects you've worked on, uh, if you need to create a new scribe, you click on the plus button to start. At the bottom of the screen, you have some other controls like the import scribe file. Let's say you've worked on your scribe on a different application. You can import it using that button. You can also click on the settings to change um, the settings in video scribe. So these are the default settings that comes with my own video scribe. Yours might be different but just change anything you want to change. So mine has a three minutes auto save timing, one second of this default um, transition time. You can see the default post time is 0 0.5. So these are variable numbers. You can literally change it from what it is. Use the plus um, to add the number or use the minus sign um, to reduce the number. So you can see my default maximum draw time is five seconds. I can change that if I want. So the last property there is the default image quality. Mine is set to 2000 pixels, which is really high. You know, you can change that if you want. So let's click out of that. Um, if you need help on video scribe, you just click on the help button and then you can literally get help online. All right, so that's uh, the basic of the basics of the interface. Uh, let's just create a new scribe file now. So I'll click on the create button. Um, so what you see right now is going to be your studio. This is where you're going to be creating your scribe. The middle of your screen here is called the canvas. So this is the whiteboard where you get to create everything. Everything you need to do would appear on this whiteboard. So we have basic tools that comes with um, video scribe tools you can actually use to work with video scribe. Let's start with the save button. The save button is the second item on our toolbox. This is our toolbox here. It's used to save. You can add an image. You can add a text. If you want to write something, you use text. You can add a chart. You can add an audio. So you want an audio, you click on it, and you, you literally select from any of those audio. So just select what you want and add it to your entire scribe file. You can also add your own voice. So after you've done your scribe, you can do a voice over your video scribe. So you just click on it and then you start to record your voice or someone else's voice, but you can actually record your own sound in video scribe. So the next item there is the paper texture. You can see our canvas is white. So you can change this paper texture from white to any of these gradients you see. Um, these are uh, gradients of white. You can change the color from white to something else. And then your canvas becomes that. So you can select a default um, hand that scribes in your animation. So you can choose from, um, you can change from the default file to thousands of other hand type or you want to use your own hand uh, to scribe in your animation so if you click on the hand you can see i have um, some default presets here i can use for my animation so just you know you can scroll through you can select you can see they are categorized like um hannah hannah has different kinds of hand you can click on it. It shows you a preview of what Hannah's hand would look like. Literally just select anything 
you want. So that's the basics of the um, toolbox. Right now, we're going to add an image to see how it works. So if you click on the add image button, you have images you've used before. They appear. If you've not used any, it appears blank. You can also search for an image on the uh, video scribe library. So video scribe images are saved with an extension of um, .svg. So they are SVG image, you know, they are vector images. So it, it, there's a way to interact with vector images. So for example, this cut. So down here on my screen, I have what we call the timeline. So every item you add on the canvas has a timeline. If you click on the play button, you can see Hannah's hand. Hannah is using a biro to scribe in the cut. So Hannah's hand comes and she uses a biro to scribe in the cut. So um, you can see this button zoom at the end. If you don't uncheck it, your animation would always zoom at the end. We don't want that. We always want to see where we are per time. So I've unchecked zoom at the end. Once you've added an image, it's ideal you set the camera to that location. So set your camera, um, set your camera to that location and literally just move the image around with the tools available there. So you can search for another image. Let's say we're writing a story uh, of a cat and a dog. So this is a cat, this is a dog. If you look down on the timeline, you can see that each of these items has their own timeline. Like the default draw time for the dog is two seconds, for that of the cat is different. So each of these items have their own timelines. Don't forget, set the camera every time you're comfortable with the location of an item. So the play button at the top is different from the play button on top of the image in the property window. The play button at the top would literally play your scribe from the start. But if you decide to play on an image, the scribe starts to play from that image. So there's an item here called the property. So every image has a property. So I click on the property um, for the dog. You can see these are all the properties for the dog. If you literally want to change anything here on that dog, you want to change how it behaves. You always click on the property window to adjust the animation time, the pause time, the transition time. The cat also has its own property. So every item you add on your canvas has their own individual uh, property for the scribe. So change the property however you want. Play your scribe from the beginning. Play around with the numbers. See what they do. Increase your animation, increase your draw time, inc in increase the pause time, see how they interact on the screen. Don't forget to save your work. Don't forget to lock your camera every time you add an image. See you in the next tutorial. Welcome back. I hope you all had a nice time in our first episode of Video Scribe. In the next chapter, I'm going to show you how to work with the timelines, how to properly arrange your two items on your canvas. Welcome to the second um, episode in our video scribe um, series. In the previous tutorial, we worked on a very simple animation on adding um, a cat and a dog, positioning them, setting up the camera. Um, if you still need to watch that, just go back to our previous video and watch it. So this is what we created in the previous tutorial. Um, we're going to be working more on this. We're going to modify everything we've worked on. Um, so let's look at the timeline and how we are going to add some other properties to the timeline. So I am going to add a mouse in the timeline and I'm going to position it to work on, to work with how the item appears on the timeline. So I'm just going to type mouse in there. And as you can see, that's a mouse. I would select it and drag it, just drag it anywhere, position it where you need to position it. So if you look at the timeline, a mouse has been added in between the cat and the dog. But you can always 
drag the mouse to a new location just the way you can see it on the screen so the mouse is going to play after the cat and the dog has played so but if you want the mouse to play before the cat and dog just adjust the position as you can see this is the um the cat then the dog then it zooms in and you have the mouse so the whole zoom effect is um your camera position so when you add an item always remember to set your camera position so i'm just gonna adjust the um draw time my draw time initially was five seconds so it's two seconds now you zoom in and just just to properly position things and all that so this is the new location of the mouse we we'll click on the camera again to relock the mouse on that new location you can change the properties of the image so let's make the um, transition a bit shorter so the pause time and transition time becomes one second so that's 0 0.5 0 0.5 which is one second so if we do that for the um the dog as well whenever you play the scribe you discover that um it it it, it takes um just one second to move from the cat to the dog so one second it takes one second to move from the cat to the dog so if you want it to transition a bit slower you you literally just have to increase the transition time so 1.5 seconds plus a pause time so everything in total gives you two seconds of um, pause time so when we play um, our scribe you discover that you know it moves just the way you've adjusted it on the um on the timeline so if you need things to move a bit slower like i have here yeah so you just change it on the um, timeline okay so literally everything you do is controlled from the timeline the property remember i said every item you add in video scribe has their own individual property on the timeline so all you really have to do is to click on the property change whatever you need to change adjust the size and ensure everything appears you know just the way you want it so if you click on the, the canvas and drag you notice that everything moves from one position into a new location so let's talk about the text property click on the t this comes out and literally just type just type anything you want to see on your screen so i have this is a bunch of animals so just below that you have fonts so if you have custom fonts preloaded on your computer um you can load it there you can import fonts from your settings panel you can literally just change your font you can also change the colors in which your fonts appear if you want them to come in red in blue they appear that way so you can increase the size by adjusting the handles you can check the properties to also adjust how it looks remember i said every item you have in video scribe is controlled by the property window and all that so don't forget to lock the camera so if we play it um so let's go let's transition from the dog and we have the dog two seconds it goes to the cut and then it comes down to the text so remember this is the default hand we're using so that's why we still have hannah's hand you know doing all our scribes for us so if you want um something in between in between the transition from the cut to the text all you literally have to do is to slow down the um the timeline a little bit oops that was a little um um rotation so we just adjust that so let's say we want the cut to appear um in between that transition from the um mouse to the text all you have to do is just slow down the transition time lock the new location for the cut and play the scribe so you can see we have the mouse here so it's going to transition you can see the cut appeared in the transition between the um, mouse and the text so if you zoom out a little bit you can see literally on video scribe everything is arranged on top of the canvas you, you, you do not have some things here and other things you know everything is arranged so literally they come out just the way you position them in the canvas so if you want the dog 
um, to come last. You move it from where it's, it's, it's located on the timeline to a new location. If you want the cart to come first, you move it. So you have the cart, and then you have the mouse, and then it goes to the dog, and then it moves back to the text. So everything plays just the way it is arranged on your timeline. So if you're writing a story, for example, check out the way um, the elements are placed on the canvas, on the canvas rather. If you're not comfortable with your position, just literally adjust them and you know make them appear the way you want. There are tools at the bottom of your canvas that helps you to move items to your left, to your right, to the top, and to the bottom. So you don't have to hold the canvas and drag it, you know, and lose, let's say, your transition, you know. So always, always use the scroll bars at the bottom to set up your workspace. So if we add another cart, for example, this cart has its own individual properties. So we, we have another cart here. So the transition goes from the dog into another cart. This helps you to, you know, kind of build a story. So people are seeing different things at different points of your screen. So what's visible right now on my screen is what the camera can capture. Always remember to put things where your camera would see them. What I can see right now, my camera cannot literally capture it. That means it would not be recorded in the animation. You can copy items, you can cut items. So if I want um, the dog or the cat to have, or the dog, for example, if I want it to have the same property with um, a replica, all I have to do is to copy it and paste it into a new location, lock the camera, you can see as I'm dragging it, it's moving the canvas. So always remember to relock the camera on that new location. So if I play my scribe now, you will discover that even after the cat has played, this dog still has the same property as the first item that played. So if you need to copy any item per time, always copy and paste. But remember, they would have the same property. If you need to change it, you go to the property window on the timeline and change it. See you in the next tutorial. So far so good. We've looked at how to properly arrange items on our timelines, drag in various items from the toolbox onto our canvas. In the next chapter, I'm going to show you how to record your own narration and even bring in an imported sound onto your scribe. In this tutorial, we're going to look at um, adding audio to our file, whether it be music or if it's a voice over what you want. So if you click on the music button in our toolbox, you can select from a wide range of music that we have. For example, this brass is for the six seconds. So if you select it, you, if you play it, you can hear the sound, you can adjust the volume just um, down here so you can delete it add another one just pick um, the, the, the the music that blends into what you want to use for your scribe you can also import your own mp3 file so if you have a file that has been pre-recorded somewhere you can also import it if you have um, a professional recording tool like audioblocks.com but it's a subscription based platform you have to pay to use it you can um, browse for um, a, lo a lot of music. You can select the kind of music you want, whether it be in jazz or pop or literally anything you want to use for your scribe. So it also allows you to edit your MP3, whether you want it in MP3 or WAV format. Um, you can literally customize how you want your music files to look like. So if you want loops, Loops are sounds that plays over and over again until it gives you a required output. So, but if you want to like pre-record your own sound, you can just click on the record button. You make your own narration. Um, so your, your narration must go in line with your scribe. If you have the MP3, like I said, pre-recorded, you can import it into video scribe if you have other um, professional music um, creating app you can use them to 
um, create your own sound. You can edit the sound however you want it. Or you can go to Fiverr. Uh, Fiverr.com is also a subscription-based platform. You can um, select any kind of music you want, whether you want to use it on YouTube or on any platform. You can use your professional video um, audio editing software to change the tempo. If you want it to play fast, if you want it to play slow, you know, you can literally just do that. Or, like I said, you can record um, your own voice over your scribe. So you could do like a narration or you could go to Fiverr to get any kind of voice you want to do a narration for you. So it's, it's, it's your choice at the end of the day to either use your voice to record or you go to Fiverr to get yourself.